Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very complex equation. We have z minus ln z equals 1 plus e all over e and we're going to be solving for z values. z is a complex number. If you're new to complex numbers go ahead and check out my lecture videos playlist on basics of complex numbers. Now, this looks like a pretty non-standard equation, doesn't it? But we can solve it. So, let's go ahead and take a look. We have this weird non-standard equation, z minus ln z, 1 plus e over e. By non-standard, I mean this is not a polynomial, this is not just exponential or logarithmic by itself, it's just a mixture of different things. So we have to use a non-standard approach. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'll start with the original equation and do both sides e to the power both sides in other words. So in other words I'm going to do e to the power z minus ln z equals e to the power 1 plus e over e. Because if a is equal to b then e to the power a equals e to the power b. Right? Okay. So from here what, what are we getting and why are we doing this? The main motivation behind doing this is like exponentiating it is because we have ln z and when I do e to the power of that we have an identity that says e to the power ln z is equal to z. Nice. Those are inverse functions and they undo each other sort of. So now we get the following e to the z divided by e to the ln z because of the power rules and then we can kind of write it as is on the right hand side first. If needed we can break it down later but e to the ln z is just going to be z itself. So this is z. Now I'm getting e to the z divided by z equals e to the power 1 plus e over e. Now if we didn't have the z at the bottom then this would be like, I don't know if you can see this hopefully, but notice that here we have z at the bottom. If we didn't have the z then this would be fairly easy to solve, don't you think? It would be exponential and z would be 1 plus e over e. But we have a z at the bottom. That's why it's non-standard. But we're going to do this. Instead of uh, dividing by z, I'm going to write it as multiplication by the reciprocal, which is 1 over z, or z to the power of negative 1. So it's going to be z to the power of negative 1 times e to the z. So this 1 over z becomes that, equals e to the power 1 plus e over e. Nice. So far, so good? Okay. I hope you're following. And now, we're going to go ahead and break this down. Let's do that at this point, because, you know, we, there's no reason to wait. Let's go ahead and split it up into two pieces like this because this is, by the way, how, how did I get that so quickly, right? Well, I can kind of write it like this first and then split it up because e is e to the power 1. Make sense? Great. Now we're going to make it greater, obviously. And here's how. Take the e. Notice that I have something to the power negative 1 on the left-hand side and I have an e to the z. They're both e's, but this one looks more complicated, so I'm going to leave it alone. And I'm going to work on these two things. How? I'm going to go ahead and write the e as 1 over e to the power negative 1. They're equal, right? And then multiply by e to the power 1 over e. So switching those terms around, I notice, of course I knew that beforehand, right? But pretend that I just noticed, uh-oh, we get z equals this. Nice, right? Why? Because if z equals that, then z equals this, which works. So in other words, one-to-one -one correspondence, notice from here that z equals 1 over e works nicely. Okay? Great. I mean, this is just an approach where we kind of break two things down on, until we can tell, oh, okay, this is what the z values are. But here's the million dollar question, which is I always raise. Is that the only solution? Are there any other solutions? Or how many solutions are there? And how can you tell? You see, these are all burning questions and we kind of need to answer them, sort of. But I'm going to leave some details for you to figure out, okay? We could also use Lambert's W function, how? For example, pick uh, from here, like take this. And then I could probably manipulate this a little bit. Like, let me go ahead and... Let's just set it equal to a constant c, can we? Because that's what it is. It's just a constant. But now I don't want to keep writing the e to the power 1 over e plus so on and so forth. Let's just use c for constant. Now, this one is kind of hard to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and 
reciprocate, is that a word? Both sides. And that's going to give me z times e to the power negative z equals c to the power negative 1. And you know what? I want to set that equal to k, another constant, because I don't want to, I don't know, I just want I'm trying to keep it simple. I hope it uh, works. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, okay, how do I use Lambert's W function? I need to turn it into a t e to the t. I'm so close. The only thing I need to do is maybe put a minus sign here and a minus sign here. Uh-oh, we got another constant, negative k. Let's go ahead and call that m. So many changes, right? Anyways, you get the idea. You can always back substitute. But now when I apply Lambert's W function on this and on m, here's what I'm getting w of this equals w of that and then this is going to be now what is w applied on t to the t that should give you a t so this is going to be negative z negative z should be w of m wow that was easy so z is going to be negative w of m but what is m m is negative k what is k k is c to the power negative one or one over c so this is negative one over c but what is c? c is e to the power something something, then you can kind of figure that out, right? A lot of substitutions, but you get the idea. So I'm able to get z even using Lambert's w function, and then plug in whatever c is, and hopefully get a numerical answer. But before uh, we finish the video, I want to show you something really cool, which is the functional approach. So what am I talking about? Remember, when we natural log well wait a minute it wasn't natural log when we did e to the power of both sides at the beginning remember we got something like e to the power z over z so i want to turn this into a function how about we define f as f of t as e to the power t over t so this function is evaluated at z and that gives us e to the power z over z right cool now let's go ahead and uh, differentiate this since this is a function uh, in terms of t, we can go ahead and differentiate it. That's going to give me e to the t times t minus 1 times e to the t using the quotient rule. Divide by t squared and then set it equal to 0. Take out the e to the t, you get t minus 1 over t squared. Set it equal to 0 again and you get t equals 1. Because this can't be 0 and t should never be 0. Now t equals 1 is a critical point. And if I make a table of values, I know some people use the second derivative. I don't like that. I like using a table because table is more visual. So basically, the root for the derivative is 1. And just let's just consider from 0 to infinity. Why am I not including negative numbers? Here's the reason. First of all, if t is 0, we're in trouble. And why am I not considering the negative numbers? Because I have the ln. Do I? Or maybe I don't. But here's what I'm going to do. This function has an asymptote, a vertical asymptote at t equals 0. Okay, It has a VA, which is vertical asymptote. So I kind of want to look at two pieces, positive values and negative values. Obviously, we can't evaluate at 0. But let's go ahead and look at the positive only, because it's going to be good enough. And you can do the other side. So here's what we get. The derivative is going to be positive when t is greater than 1. You can tell from here, hopefully. And then it's going to be negative otherwise, which means our function is going to decrease and then increase. This is why I love graphs or tables, because this clearly shows that we have a minimum at t equals 1. Nice. So what is f of 1? f of 1 is e. In other words, we have a minimum at 1, comma e. That's a point on the graph. And the graph, when this function is graphed, looks like something like this we have a function that decreases and then increases, making this minimum at 1, comma e. This is not drawn to scale at all, but we have the t, f to the t. Here's the million dollar question. When I got my expression e to the z over z being equal to, remember that part, e to the power 1 plus e over e, this number is definitely greater than e, right? Because this is greater than 1. Are you convinced? Because this is 1 over e plus 1. So it's greater than e. What does that mean? It means that there's going to be a horizontal line above this point. And guess what? We're going to get two intersection points, which means there should be another solution, which we're not naming here because you just need to use a calculator for that. 
end. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.